Hello everybody, welcome to Therapy Dog Talk. My name is Sherry, my dog's name is Sunny, and we are training to be an animal assisted counseling team. If you are just getting started and you're not really sure where to get started, we have a free guide for you that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com. I'm really excited for you to meet today's guest. We're talking with Lena and her dog Birdie, or at least with Lena anyway, about their experiences volunteering through Alliance of Therapy Dogs and First Responder Therapy Dogs. So looking forward to hearing about their experience. Hi, Hi Lena. Hi. Hi, Birdie. Hey. She's a sheep -a doodle yeah? Yeah, she's poodle mixed with a sheep -a doodle Well, for those who don't know you, would you like to introduce us to yourself and to Birdie? Yeah, so my name's Lena. I live in Marin County, California. This is Birdie. She is two and a half years old. I've been working as a therapy dog team with her since May of 2021. And okay. it's just been a really great experience. We're mainly focused on first responders, but a little bit all over the place as well. Okay, very cool. How did you first find out about the role of therapy dogs? Yeah, so I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was 10 years old and first came to know of therapy dogs during my treatment in the hospital. And I knew how important that was to me as a kid in the hospital, what kind of difference that made. And so that I, my childhood dog was very, very grumpy and would never have made a good therapy dog. He was a good therapy dog for me, but not for the general population. I passed away in the beginning of 2020, right before the pandemic started. And I just had a really hard time once we went down. And so when I got Birdie, I was just like, hmm, let's see if she kind of fits this role. You know, you can't force a dog to be a therapy dog. And she just happened to love everyone and love attention. And we knew she'd be great for the job. And so I've always wanted to work in children's hospitals because that's where I've met my therapy dogs. But I also have a lot of friends who are first responders and I've seen the toll that job takes on them. So that kind of pushed us in the trajectory towards being a therapy dog team for first responders. But I'm happy to still be working in hospitals and in schools. So still getting to interact with kids that had the same impact the way I had an impact of a therapy dog as a kid as well. So it has a really special meaning for you then, a really personal meaning. Yes, I know how important therapy dogs are in a wide range, not just in the hospitals, but a few other places as well. Yeah. So when you got Birdie, were you looking for a therapy dog or you were just looking for a new pet and then realized she would make a good therapy dog? Like I said, it was just a challenge when my dog passed away during COVID and I actually started flaring and was not feeling very well. And after trying some different medication options, we thought that getting a new dog might make that difference. Maybe it wasn't a medication change. Maybe I just needed a new dog. And, you know, Luke was a big part of my life. He comforted me in the hospital and stayed on my bed whenever I was sick and always watched over me, tapped on me and definitely felt that loss. So when I got Birdie, it was kind of just to fill that void, not necessarily for any working position but like mm -hmm. I realized how much she loved people and how friendly she was and I was like hmm, let's start this journey and see where we go even when we started training it was always like if this is not what she wants to do then we'll be done at any time like I'm not going to force her to do anything but every step we kept taking she just kept showing how much she loved it so I was like let's see we always joke she was born on February 14th so we say she was meant for this job because she loves love and um, we on the day she doesn't have a visit, she requires me to pet her for two hours, the same visit time she have every day. So I do know that she loves her job, loves the attention, getting to meet new people. And I do think that she was built for this. Yeah. How often do you go out on visits? So I actually just had a really bad flare and ended up having surgery. So that kind of stopped our visits for a while. And Birdie has also been sick. We both have some stomach issues also made for each other on that front so normally we do about three to four visits a week right now we're only doing maybe one until we both feel ready to get back in there but we're also gearing up for what is already a pretty bad fire season so kind of making sure we're both relaxed and rested and ready to go for when we start working at base camps not just at stations and at the hospital locally I love that you're really taking that time to prioritize your self-care and realizing that right now you need to be at a different cadence than where you are other times. What were you looking for in a dog when you looked for a birdie? Did you know that you wanted a sheep-a-doodle or how did you come across her? 
I had never heard of a sheep doodle before. Now I see them all the time. They're getting very popular. My family's just allergic to dogs, so we needed some kind of hypoallergenic poodle mix. And there was one night I was just really upset and just needed a dog. And I was just like bawling in my room. And my mom told me if I went to bed now, as soon as I woke up, I could get on Craigslist and look for a new dog. And she was the first dog that was posted like five minutes before I got online. And her, I'll have to show you. She has puppy pictures on her Instagram. But I just pulled up her or her pictures, and I was like, I have to have this dog. And she was actually in Utah, and my dad just got on a plane the next day and went and brought her home for me, which was awesome. So, Aww. yeah, worked out pretty great. I obviously love her, and I love sheep doodles I think she's, like, a really great size and a great temperament and breed, and I'm happy with what I chose. Good. I'm so glad. Did anything surprise you in your training journey to become a therapy dog team? Mainly the training here. I think that's been a big one. The first time I took her test, we didn't pass. And I was pretty crushed because I felt like we had worked really hard. But I was also pushing her at a really young age. I was trying to get her certified as early as she could. And she just wasn't ready. And there were still some fear periods that we needed to work through. And some small things that she just needed a little work on. And there were some days when she was really on it. And other days where I was like, I guess this isn't the job for her. She's a herding dog and can be a little crazy at times. And she was also a puppy. So just kind of like giving both of us some grace. And when I failed, not up right away, you know, we went back to the drawing board and kept training and eventually passed our test. But realizing that when you make mistakes, it's not the end of the world. It's, you know, understanding the dog it took me a long time to learn who she is, body language, and how to advocate for her to make sure that we could be the best team we could be. Yeah, that's really important. I like that you didn't give up on her and that you continued to look for how you could work together better as a team. And we got there. Yeah. How old was she when she became a therapy dog? She was a year and four months. So still we really young. Her, yeah, we took the first test as soon as she hit one year, and that was definitely too early. I'm sure there are some dogs that can pass at a year, but that was not for me. And I think I put both of us under a lot of pressure to be ready as soon as possible. But yeah, after giving ourselves a break and kind of letting her age and mature a little bit, she definitely became the perfect dog and she still wasn't too old. I don't know why I felt the need to like do it right out of the gate. But yeah, we've been doing this for a year and a half, which has been great. We've done over 100 visits now. And we've been wow, working. Pretty well. Yeah, thank you. What do you enjoy the most about being a therapy dog team? I think getting to meet so many people working with first responders has been a huge honor and a huge joy for me. There's a lot we have in common, even though our jobs are very different. Some of our, our backgrounds and our struggles with mental health are the same. And so I think getting to connect with those people, I always think it's kind of therapy for me, you know, realizing that I'm not alone and they've coped and how they've healed and continued on. And I think probably the best part, though, is seeing how much my can make an impact on people's lives. It's always very, very special to me when I do get those messages or see those immediate reactions of like, I haven't seen my husband smile in weeks until he ran into birdie. You know, this is exactly what I need and I feel so much better now. It's that kind of feedback that keeps pushing me to keep going. And yeah, there's just been a lot of really incredible experiences. I've realized the impact I'm making, the impact that Birdie's making, and how incredible that is, and that I wouldn't want to stop until she wants to stop because I know that we are making a difference. That's really special. It sounds like you have some moments that have really stood out to you throughout your visits. Yeah, definitely. At camps and all of that, that's, you know, the hardest people are working. They have the weeks. They're not really sleeping or eating or getting any breaks. And that's when I feel like it makes the most difference because I know they're under a lot of stress and overworked and very tired. And I know that our dogs are making a difference at base camp. And I think that's really exciting and really special and to see some walls come down. You know, the tough guys get excited and squealy when a dog comes around seeing the reaction, knowing how important it is to be out there for them as well. Yeah. And when you say base camp, you're talking about for like the California fires, right? Yeah. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. And I wanted to clarify <laughs> for anyone who maybe isn't familiar where first responder therapy dog teams do do a lot of work up in Northern California. Yes, we're quite busy around. Yeah, unfortunately, it's about that time of year, huh? Yeah. yeah. Many, many fires. When we're not at fires, we're doing safety. It's in critical incident debriefs, sometimes memorial services or events, but then once season kicks in, we're mostly at fire-based camps and around. Yeah. Cheyenne asked if you're with Hope, but you're not, right? You're just with First Responder Therapy Dogs and Alliance. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think first responder therapy dogs does some similar work to the hope crisis response teams. It's just more on the fire side um, and first responder things. So we do some similar things as hope. And I know a lot of dogs that are certified with hope, but a little bit different. Yeah. What advice do you have someone who's interested in becoming a therapy dog team? I think the number one thing is your dog can't talk. So make sure it's <coughs> something they enjoy. Especially if you're working with kids, you know, kids are a little bit crazy and aren't always predictable. So I also think like there's a lot of dogs that are great therapy dogs when they do a certain type of therapy. I know Birdie likes kids for a while, can tolerate it for a while, but it's not her favorite. She prefers to be. And also just like being super aware of their body language and their cues and figuring out what they do like. But I also think just, you know, keep trying if it's something you both like to do, but need a little extra work, keep going for it. Awesome. What gear do you end up taking with you to go to base camp? Yeah, so quite a bit. We're normally gone for two or three days, depending on how far away the fire is and how many base camps there are. So when we're walking around, she has her first responder therapy dog's vest, her harness, and her leash. Depending on how hot it is, I have shoes for her. She needs them. She does not like them, but sometimes has to wear them and then I always have a backpack with water for her and water for me and snacks for her and we have trading cards we make for all of our dogs so I have those as well and then in my car we have paramedic kits for our dogs so whether that's birdie needs help or we run into a dog at base I always have that with me and then everything she needs, food, water, bedding, toys. I have to bathe her as soon as we get back from base camp every day because she smells like smoke. So there's definitely a large packing list for such a small trip. Yeah, making yeah. sure, you know, she's care of and well rested. It's a lot of work and really long days. So whatever she needs to do to be able to recuperate and keep going the next day. Awesome. Well, Lena, is there anything else that you wanted to share while you're here? Well, we are always looking for new people to join first responder therapy dogs, <laughs> if that's what people are interested in doing. We've been around for almost two years, and we already have over 60 teams across the country. So there's a lot of first responders that need help and a lot more states we haven't hit and a lot of area to cover. So if anyone is interested in heading in that first responder direction, they're welcome to either reach out to me or reach out to our first responder therapy dogs Instagram or Facebook page or website. There's a lot of ways to contact us. <laughs> But I'm always plugging that because it is so much fun and we do have such a good time and it's such an incredible experience. So I'm always happy to take new team members, of course. And I'm just really excited to keep doing this work and keep encouraging people to keep working hard and know if this is what you and your team want. It's a really noble and incredible job to have. And, you know, I know everywhere needs therapy dogs. So there's plenty of work to be done. So if that's what you want to do, even if you're hitting some hurdles or having any kind of struggle to keep going and see if you can talk to other therapy dog teams and get some help as well, or if there's any like in-person classes or online tools, the tests are hard. So practice, 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 but I know you guys can do it. And you have a role at First Responder Therapy Dogs, yeah? Yeah, so I'm on the board, I serve on the board and then also just a handler. Okay, great. And when you're looking for new teams, is there anything specific that they should know? Pretty similar to everywhere else. We do observations at police, fire, and dispatch. Those are the three units we work with. So making sure that you're accustomed to that and your dog is okay with a lot of noises and gear and changes. You know, most of the time when we're at a firehouse, they're going to get a call on the TV or in person with engine noises and sirens and all of that. Yeah, there's a lot you can do to practice even before you take Yes, just walking around by fire stations or police stations and going to community events where they're there. Yeah, nothing that I can think of is too crazy. It's a really fun job. You get to meet a lot of different people and go to some cool places that you would never get to do any other way. Like last year, I drove through a fire to get from one base camp to the other. And I was like, well, that's cool. And yeah, there's <laughs> It was really awesome. Really great people that you get to meet and people you get to interact with that you wouldn't otherwise get to. And, you know, I've really realized how vulnerable population that is. And I think this job is so important and there will never be enough of us. So I always want new people to join for sure. Well, Lena, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to share a bit of your journey and a little bit more about first responder therapy dogs. Yeah, thank you so much. This was great. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.